Hello, I am Professor Stephen Nesheva, and uh, this is a video uh, in order to introduce myself to you and to uh, sort of develop uh, what the structure of a flipped classroom, uh, a day in a flipped classroom might look like. So if we're just thinking about one day, then uh, we could think of that one day as being divided into three parts. And the three parts are a pre-class part, an in-class part, and a post-class part. The pre-class part, that's where you would deliver uh, some information to students by a video. And that video, it has to accomplish certain important things. Um, it, if there's, it needs to introduce the topic or the question at hand. If there's some theory associated with that problem, you need to develop that, that theory. Um, probably some context or some motivation uh, would be appropriate um, for, for that part. Once you get in class, that's the second part of this, this is where students are going to actually solve the problem with your help. And uh, that's really the meat, that's the centerpiece of this, of this, of this whole approach. It's students uh, solving a problem uh, with your help. The third part of this is uh, the post-class class, uh, engagement. And uh, this is where typically students will reflect on something that, you know, what they've done in class. Uh, I have students uh, do that reflection in a, in a notebook like this. And in there, that's, uh, it's an important part because students um, will sort of um, develop the vocabulary of whatever it was that they were, that they were engaged in. They might write definitions of, of things that they wrote or worked with. They might annotate graphs. Uh, they, uh, they might explore some cause and effect um, and, uh, or develop some what-if scenarios. So this day of a flipped classroom is a video beforehand, engagement, problem solving during, and a reflection afterward. I just thought I would give you a couple of, of examples. So uh, one example that I've been working with recently is carbonate chemistry. And the question is, uh, the, the question is why do oceans have the pH that they, they do? Why do they have the acidity they do? And it turns out that the answer to that uh, all lies in, the, in what's called carbonate chemistry. So the pre-class part of this video, what I would need to do is I would need to lay out uh, what are the chemical equations that are relevant? I would need to lay out what sort of equations need to be solved. Turns out there are some simultaneous uh, algebraic equations that you need to solve. Uh, one would also lay out why one might be interested in doing this. Well, I mean, perhaps the, the context is global warming and we have increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide that, that will affect the, the chemistry of the oceans. Once we get in class, then uh, students will be now working on solving those equations, the theory that was laid out in the video, trying to work out uh, the answer to the problem, which in this case would be what is the pH uh, of the ocean based on, on that chemistry. Uh, there, uh, that engages you as the teacher you know, quite a lot because students are solving problems and your job is actually to help them solve those problems, maybe offer some strategies for, for problem solving and engage in some maybe remediation or, or discussion. So the third part of this would be the post-class engagement. This is where students will write down some definitions. They might define what pH is or, or what carbonate chemistry is, develop some, some graphics. Maybe they would graph the carbonate or the pH concentration uh, over time. Explore some what-if scenarios. What if the um, concentration of uh, carbon dioxide in the air doubled? What would happen to the pH? the ocean. Three parts. Uh, just one more example. Uh, maybe the question is, uh, the, the topic is a traveling salesman problem, and the question is, of course, what is the best route that a salesman ought to take to a set of series? Once again, you will lay out the theory in a video, whatever equations or, or whatever theory is required, and, and motivation. Why, why would you want to, to solve such a problem? During class, students engage in the actual hard work of solving a, a traveling salesman problem. Afterwards, they would write definitions and uh, explore what-if scenarios. So in both of these cases, it's a one-day flipped classroom and uh, it comes in three parts. Pre-class video, in-class work, 
post-class reflection.